Hey guys, my name is Matt with BZB Gear. I'm one of the videographers here, and today we're going to be talking about a technology that is going to be very key with one of our biggest launches uh, coming up here. And so with the launch of our Adamo camera around the corner, we wanted to take the time to talk about a major feature set of that camera, and that is NDI. Networks and IP providers have expanded their capabilities, but most importantly, they have had a larger focus on more bandwidth. This provided a very unique opportunity for video specifically, and this meant that the potential to tap into an existing infrastructure to run video signals and other production aspects uh, kind of quickly became a reality. NDI is not just simply a codec, it boasts a whole plethora of extras like control over IP, automatic device discovery, tools to convert NDI cameras into web cameras to be recognized by software like Zoom, uh, and a whole bunch of other advancements. Over the years, NDA has grown to be quite the juggernaut in terms of functionality and raw video quality uh, for controlling and producing broadcasts over the network, and they haven't been showing any signs of stopping anytime soon as they've continued to release great updates to their NDI software, with the most recent being NDI 5. Uh, NDI 5 has a whole a bunch of awesome features like NDI Bridge, which theoretically will allow you to basically run a video uh, production from say Florida uh, when you're based out of California. It's really cool stuff. There is, however, one small problem with full bandwidth NDI. And that's while being incredibly lucrative due to its fantastic image quality and low latency, it does require quite the network and bandwidth. In order to get all the metadata and the low about 100 milliseconds latency or under, you're looking at needing to uh, give or take up to 160 megabytes per second for 1080p footage and something along the lines of a 10 gigabit network. So that will bring us to NDI HX. With HX2, the bandwidth was bumped up significantly to about 15 megabits per second, and support for H.265 was also added. While this was a great advance in technology and stream quality, some of those problems still persisted. I uh, recently had the opportunity to speak to some of the great guys at the uh, VizRT group to help get some information on NDI and NDI HX3, and they really made it clear that NDI HX3's main goal was to move NDI HX into, uh, basically to move it from more of a consumer thing to a premium experience. So they not only wanted to improve the quality of the video from the camera over the network, but also the usability. To that end, latency was a huge focus. Uh, NDI HX3 takes about 65 to 80 megabits per second, and for good reason. So. HX3 is poised as something to offer a premium alternative to full bandwidth that NDI would be proud to stamp their name on. In fact, that's exactly what they're doing. In order for a camera to support NDI HX3, the camera actually needs to be submitted to NDI so that their engineers can test it, confirm that it's up to spec, and can adequately handle the requirements for NDI HX3. And then they would certify it as an NDI HX3 product. Since I've been hammering on the latency of uh, HX3, let me put into perspective one of the key requirements of a camera to be certified by NDI as HX3. An NDI HX3 camera must have a latency of less than 100 milliseconds. That is less than a tenth of a second. That's very, very fast, and that's a really good thing. So let's just quickly recap what NDI HX3 really is. Um, uh, when it's up against NDI HX2, HX2 is going to be more of kind of your uh, consumer grade product. That's not to say it's a bad product, but it's going to be lacking uh, a lot of those extra features, especially the um, tunability that you're going to have with NDI HX3, as well as the increased bandwidth ceiling that you get with NDI HX3. Due to the fact that NDI themselves have to confirm that the components of a camera are up to snuff to support the demands of NDI HX3, one thing that can't happen is upgrading an NDI HX2 camera to an NDI HX3 camera. NDI HX3 cameras are purpose-built to support the demands of NDI HX3, and on a similar vein, NDI HX3 does not refer to 4K streaming. NDI was very clear that all of their protocols of NDI are really based in 1080p video, uh, and on the flip side of that, that's not to say that an NDI HX3 camera offering 4K couldn't happen. 
but to date no one has tried and I suspect the reason for that is because you'd really need more bandwidth than NDI full bandwidth. You'd need somewhere in the ballpark of over 180 megabits per second. So that wraps it up for this look at NDI, the history of it, uh, what different versions there are, and we really hope you guys learned something from it. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave some in the comment section. Uh, we would love to get back to you and try and help you out uh, figuring out whatever the answer is to that question. Uh, you can also talk to a lot of the guys over at uh, New Tech, uh, NDI, or the VizRT group. I know all of those people are fairly knowledgeable on the subject. And uh, as we found out when we were over there at uh, NAB, they are more than happy to answer questions. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time.